So today's episode of Talk with Texan is going to be a little bit different compared to what we have talked about before. How? Well, we're going to be talking about a video from way back in the beginning years of YouTube. Or, well, first four anyway. We're going to be talking about a guy that I believe was one of the earlier examples of a YouTuber not many people liked. And he may be a dead topic these days. That isn't going to stop people like me from talking about people like him. Today, we're going to be talking about a man named Dylan Guptill, or Guptill89 at the time. If you're not familiar with this person, then let me give you a little background on who this particular person is. As I mentioned before, Guptill was one of the earlier examples of a pretty bad YouTuber in a way back in 2009 and 10. Mostly known for his video on 10 of the hottest female Sonic characters, Guptill was also pretty controversial in videos ranting about particular things he felt needed to be addressed while other people didn't really see a reason to talk about them. Like how he viewed corporate logo changes, how he felt about the internet, or today's topic of this video, his rant talking about cursing in reviews. These are the kind of videos that got him popular for the wrong reasons, and are basically what got him the reputation he has today. And yes, I know this video is like 14 years old, but given the topic that this particular video talks about, I feel like this is something that still applies to today's standards, so I feel the need to address this. Now before we actually begin into the video, a little disclaimer. Do not go and maliciously attack this person. Yes, he has his own beliefs, but it's not right to attack somebody just because they have different beliefs from yours. You may not like it, you might even disagree with it, but it's not right to attack somebody for it. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about Guptill's rant about cursing, shall we? So the video opens up with an intro. It's a bit weird looking, especially given today's era, but this is from 2009, so I can't really complain. We all have things that tick us off in life. For example, bullies, drugs, and hard to control children. Uh, yeah. I can ignore all of these things. However, there's one thing that's been bothering me that I can't ignore. I'm talking about these users my age end up showing their complete lack of thoughtfulness when reviewing a video game. Wouldn't the word that you're looking for be thoughtlessness? Because I think you got the two words mixed up. It's like someone pursuing a PhD but only reads comic books. There are three things that I can't stand. First of all, a few of them don't use a script. I wonder if they have written down any notes at all. Yeah, that's me on some occasions. I have done videos where they were unscripted. And I can see where you're coming from on that because it is generally a bad idea to do a video unscripted. Especially when you're making some kind of big project. But the thing is, I do believe that there are some people that will know what to do or say. And if they need to, they can edit it to make it look good. At least, I think some people will. Secondly, many of them don't edit the footage in the videos. It's basically footage that occurs as if you turned on the video game console and started to play from start to finish. So, like, a Let's Play? Because you're making it sound like a Let's Play when you're explaining it like that. And the third one is the worst of the worst. I'm sure some folks will object to this complaint. The worst part about these guys is repeated profanity and vulgar actions. Thought so. Yeah, some people don't really like cursing in videos, so I'll give you that. But let me explain. When you don't script yourself, you sound boring with a lot of uhs, ums, and many pauses. Wait, hold on a second. This video is about cursing, right? You should have titled this video three things you didn't like about video reviews. Probably wouldn't stop the video from being bad, but it's still a suggestion. Also, you should have warned us that you were going to bring up the first point. Just saying. It's not a good idea to just go straight into it. You make people confused. To be more specific, how would you like it if a radio or TV announcer started telling a story and had no idea how he or she would tell it? With all the stammering and time-wasting, wouldn't it make you want to change the channel? Probably, but that's still kind of a rarity to happen, though. And most of the time, those people will still know how to say it, so I don't think I should be complaining that much. That, and they usually will have somebody to help them. 
We usually only get to see the first few levels of the game you're reviewing. That doesn't always show us the troubled points you're describing. Sometimes people watching would want to see the later levels. I certainly would. I don't want to see someone continuously failing to pass a stage or level and having to start over. But what if the game is too hard for the reviewer to continue on? AVGN has had moments like that before, where he's usually trying to review a game, and when he's playing the game, he has a hard time trying to continue on because of how hard it is. And he usually addresses it as one of his points in the video. Fuck! You know, with some practice, I can get through the fighting parts without getting hit once. But the problem is the fucking snipers! Look at this situation! Yes! No! I can't even beat the first level, and I'm trying as hard as I can. You have Medusa heads coming at you from both directions, and two knights throwing axes at two different altitudes. I mean, look at the pattern going on here. Anything that hits you drains a quarter of your health, so that means four hits and you're dead. It is something that you do see in the Let's Play, but you can usually edit it out in the editing process. The third problem, profanity and disgraceful actions, is the number one reason why most game reviewers are hard to enjoy. Uh, not really. It adds more to the character, like AVGN. It is in the name after all. This problem raises a big question. Do you absolutely think it is necessary to spew out dirty language and have it bounce off a viewer's eardrums? Depends on the reviewer, I guess. Most of the time, though, it can lead to some funny stuff. I mean, think about it for a minute or two. Do you want to know why dirty language is a huge deal? It's mostly because of two important points. The first point is, the inappropriate words being launched out of your oral cavity like bullets just make you sound quite unintelligent and not even funny in the slightest. The words themselves don't make you unintelligent. The way that you complain about things does make you sound more unintelligent, especially if it's something that's really pointless. Too many reviewers' favorite words are the F-words, the A-words, and the S-word. Well, they are pretty common words, so... Those words have basically replaced every possible adjective, noun, and interjection imaginable. Not really, honestly. I feel as if people are devoted to these words as if they were awesome presidents or prime ministers. Honestly, guys, can't you think of something better to say or a better way to say it? Probably, but it won't be as entertaining, honestly. If they did that, then shows like Hell's Kitchen or YouTubers like AV Jam won't be as good. But that's just me. Take it from somebody that actually does like swearing in certain things. Swear words are just a crutch! Besides, you should really take this into consideration. It's also the second point I want to make. There are children who use the internet. That's right, I said children. Well, can't say I didn't see that coming. But I'll address this more as time goes on. What if a kid stumbled upon your review and started reciting out loud, This game is a piece of I can't f***ing stand this f***ing crap anymore. I'm done. Have a nice f***ing day. They'll be sent to their room with soap in their kissers, along with a glass of water and a bucket. Okay, in seriousness on that, that's a bit of an overreaction, honestly. They're more than likely going to get a smack to the head, I'm sure. But they are going to be told that they shouldn't be saying stuff like that out loud ever again. At least until they're fully grown up, anyway. And I know that from experience in some similar way, because I've had it happen to me before. When I was a kid, I got told by my parents that I shouldn't be watching Jacksepticeye or Markiplier anymore because of the fact that they swore. They told me to never watch them until I was old enough. And I feel like this is something that every parent should do. They should tell their children not to t watch certain things with bad language in them, even if it's something like, say, Minecraft, which is usually a kid-friendly game. And let me add something to this as well. We don't know when a kid is watching our videos, and we don't know if they're repeating the things that we say. It's not our fault that they're repeating the things that we're saying, though, in the end. I'm in the belief that thinking that it's more of the parents' fault for being irresponsible and letting the kids just watch our videos. 
it's just something that I feel like I need to say, especially given what's going on with modern YouTube. Let me just put it in a simpler way. We make the content. We aren't in charge of who watches our videos. We don't know when a kid is watching our videos. It's up to the parents to actually make sure they do their job and make sure the kid isn't watching our videos for the sake of them. Because it's not okay for a kid to swear. I'm aware. But we still don't know when a kid is watching our stuff. So it's not our fault for it. Just saying. I'd also like to add as well that 90% of the time, these YouTube channels that these kids are watching usually aren't really made for kids. So when a kid is actually stumbling across that YouTube channel to begin with, that's kind of the kid's own fault. Don't you realize that when a child hears other people cuss, he or she will think that it's cool? Again, as I mentioned before already, they should be told that they shouldn't be repeating stuff like that. It's not our fault that they're repeating the stuff that we say. We don't know when they're watching our videos. Don't you want to set a better example than that? Hey kids, guess what? It's alright for you to mimic me because I have amazing talent. So forget about Fred and Smosh. Watch my videos. You'll be cooler than they are. <sighs> oh, man. I sure don't want to say that again. Please don't. I literally just died inside. Whew. To put it simply, using profanity and vulgarity during a review of a video game is unnecessary. It's also just plain boring. Not really. A lot of the time it can be funny, but that's because of usually stuff like timing and the joke being told. And as I mentioned before, it also adds to the character. This suggestion is directed towards three reviewers that people seem to pay the most attention to. Chris Bors, the irate gamer, James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, and Douglas Darian Walker, that guy with the glasses. He goes by Nostalgia Critic. <sighs> I have an idea. Why don't you revise some of your reviews when you get the chance? Sure, it's a truckload of work, but if you do that, you might just end up with more fans. No, you won't. If something tells me you don't understand things like this. Because if you were to change everything about the original stuff, you're more than likely to lose half your fan base because you're removing elements that made people watch you to begin with. That's like changing a TV show or movie series and removing all the elements that made it good to begin with. If you do stuff like that, then you end up with stuff like Blue Brothers 2000. Right now, you might either be throwing a hissy fit or wondering, what would be a good review to watch? One that's honest, one that makes good points, one that doesn't make you look like an idiot? Well, luckily, I know four places on the net where civilized behavior is found. Nightwing 01's YouTube channel page, Strange Gamers channel page, GameSpot.com, and GameTrailers.com. That's a total of only four places on the net, and on one hand, where civilized reviews can be found. Aren't most of those places bad, though? From what I've heard, anyway? Like, not all reviewers swear. You can find some good ones on YouTube, I'm sure. Think about it. Who wants to hear a person my age or older shout loudly and curse like a sailor over a video game? May I go on? Your parents tell you to stop shouting over a game when you're young, and at your age, that info should be hardwired to your cerebrum! Well, swearing as a kid is a completely different story compared to swearing as an adult. When two adults swear together, that's usually fine, but when a kid does it with another kid, that can be a bit of a problem. Even though you're acting, the cursing is abrasive and tiresome. Depends on the reviewer. Let me assure you, I like the work of James Rolfe, Chris Bors, and Douglas Walker. Despite them cursing? However, there are a few things about those reviewers that make them less enjoyable. 
Take Mr. Rolf's work, for instance. He puts his reviews up on three different websites. GameTrailers.com, ScrewAttack.com, and Cinemassacre.com. All reviews I've seen are flooded with swears and common crude phrases. Again, as I mentioned before already, it goes with the character. His movie summaries on Cinemassacre.com are similar, except that they are not as loaded with bad language as his AVGN videos. Well, yeah, because James as a person is a lot different compared to the AVGN character. AVGN is depicted as a stereotypical angry gamer. Why do you think most of his videos takes place in the basement of his home? It's a character. Even if Rolf is part of an R-rated movie site, there is no need to include things like they'll kick your ass till shit comes out your ears. If it's R-rated, then there's bound to be swearing in them. What do you expect? I can understand crude jokes and many swears in an R-rated movie or mature-rated game since it's authentic for where the action takes place. However, in a game review, not to mention a movie or TV show review, the included vulgarity and profanity is out of line in place. Well, it's for entertainment. And most of these videos aren't exactly meant for kids. It just goes with the particular series and it just goes with the character. I think I've mentioned this like several different times at this point. If these guys used their intellect as well as their talent, the audience scale would broaden out beyond 12 to 15 year olds. Well again, these videos weren't exactly meant for kids. AVGN was never meant for kids to watch. Neither were Nostalgia Critic reviews. Why do you want them to lower their standards just to appeal to a younger audience? It doesn't really make sense for the character. So the video Thanks begins to make its way to the outro, and that was Guttail's rant. All in all, what did I think of the video here? I think in the long run, I'm not exactly a fan of this. There were some points I can't get behind, but most of the points that were made weren't exactly points I can agree with. Now, I'm also going to leave this. Swearing is mainly a adult and teen kind of ordeal because it's in their range. If something like AVGN were to be made for kids, it would be a whole lot different compared to what it is today. And I don't really think that would be a good thing. But anyway, that will be the end of the video today, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, I'm also going to say that there is going to be another episode of Talk with Texan coming out sometime in the future. But instead of something like a video that we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit more old school. You'll see when the video comes out. But until then, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more Talk with Texan, hit the subscribe button for more. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you for the next Talk with Texan. So, until then, I'll see ya. Cinema.